Hi, I'm Graham Blackburn, and in this episode of Traditional Woodworking by Hand, we're going to talk about how to keep your workpiece secure. Most woodworkers use some kind of workbench, and I know there are all kinds of workbenches. There's some that you can make yourself out of a pair of planks. There are so-called Scandinavian workbenches. There are English workbenches, French workbenches. But by and large, in this day and age, most workbenches have at least one vice. This workbench has what's known as a face vice. So I can clamp something in it that I might want to work on. It also has a tail vise at the other end. I can not only clamp things in the tail vise, but in conjunction with dogs, which are these metal, sometimes they're made out of wood, rectangular pieces that fit in a series of dog holes, I am able to secure wood between the dogs so that the piece is absolutely secure. Now, as you can see, there are dog holes all the way along the front of this bench, which means that theoretically I could clamp using the tail vise a piece of wood that was almost six feet long. Those are vices. One of the features of Scandinavian benches, and indeed many contemporary benches, is that the vices are designed to close completely parallel. That didn't always used to be the case. Sometimes vices would bend, which means that if you want to clamp something that is not perfectly parallel and you have a vise that closes parallel, you need something else. Here's an example of how you do that. This is a piece of drip edge. And if I wanted to plane the end of that, I, it would be difficult for me to put the wedge piece in without hurting it. But if I use a couple of little tapered slots like this, then I can fit this in and I can tighten this up. And even though the vise is parallel, this is now perfectly secure. That's just one example of how you might use the face vise on odd shaped wood. Another example is that you might want to plane something and there's not room to put it in the dogs or in the vices. And so a really simple trick is to use your bench hook, which we talked about before, and put the bench hook in the vise. And now it becomes a place against which you can place a piece of wood. Let's imagine we're going to use this piece of wood here. Now I have somewhere and the workpiece is secure. It's better than trying to clamp it to the bench. Keeping the bench hook in the vise also allows me to use things like this. And this is simply a device if I want to hold something that is an irregular shape, that doesn't come to a square end, that has some kind of edge to it or shape to it. So I'll show you with a square piece of wood, but you can see by doing this, now I have a place that allows me to keep this piece of the workpiece totally straight. Very similar to that is something called the sticking box. And this I can either put in a vise, I can put between dogs, or I can rest it against the bench hook, but it's advantage is that it has a v-shaped bottom so it allows me to hold securely odd shaped round pieces it's a little hard to hold a round piece in the vise or a round piece on something that's square and this is just the simplest possible version there are in fact there's no reason why you can't make sticking boxes at particular angles. This one is just a 45 degree so that a, four, a square piece of wood will fit in tightly like that. But 
if I were making something that was hexagonal, I could change the angle so that it would totally secure the odd shaped piece of wood. Now, among the more common holding devices, and we've mentioned this before in previous e episodes, but I want to show you something extra, is the use of the bench hook, the hold fast. Here is the simplest kind of hold fast. On my bench, I have a little metal collar designed to hold a more sophisticated kind of hold fast. And what this does is whatever piece of wood I want to work on, I simply tighten this down and it makes the wood absolutely secure. I can use this in conjunction with a lot of other things. There was a time when most benches, particularly in France, didn't have vices. All they had was a series of holdfasts. Nowadays, I just use the one here. But a word of caution, wherever you decide to bore a hole, sooner or later you're going to discover that you wish you'd bought it somewhere else. There is something that you can offset with that, especially if you don't want to go for the deluxe holdfast, the really expensive record holdfast. This is a much less expensive pony holdfast. And if you don't want to bore a hole in your bench, then there's no reason why you can't bore a hole in a square piece of wood and secure this. In, in this case, I'm just putting it in, in the tail vise, but there's no reason why I couldn't use a clamp to hold this to the bench. And I can do the same thing. I put this in, and by hammering on the end here, now the wood is perfectly secure. So making your own hold fast, this, this one is actually bored to take the smaller pony hold fast as well as the fatter record hold fast. I have more choices of how and where I want to secure things. How do you get this out, you might ask, if you didn't see the previous episode? You simply tap the back. Watch, it's really firm. Tap that, and it's loose. Now, so long as we're talking about the tail vise here, take a look at this. What do you think this is? It's just a square piece of wood, and I can open the tail vise up. I can put this in, just like this, and now I have a device where if I have a very small piece of wood, I have a space, especially if I use it in conjunction with the hold fast, where I can keep the wood secure when I'm using fret saws, jig saws, or coping saws, those saws with the very thin blades. One last holding device that I think we've mentioned before is a mitre box, whose main function is to guide the saw so that you make accurate cuts. But if you make your mitre boxes with a little lip, which either will allow them to hook against the side of the bench, or just as I have the bench hook here, you can actually clamp it so it's perfectly secure. Now I have another holding device. I have two or three sizes of these. This is a relatively small one, but here is an even bigger one. And I just make these on the fly. These are not works of art that I keep forever, but you make them as you need them. So as you can see, a bench has a lot of possibilities if you're aware of all the different ways of using it between the vices and the dogs and the holdfasts and, and the mitre boxes and the bench hooks. There is no reason why you should be doing anything with the workpiece not completely safely secured. So I hope that was helpful. I hope you'll make some of these devices. If you want to see more, don't forget, hit the little subscribe button and come back and we'll show you how to use some of these devices to make some really interesting pieces in the future. Thank you.